When I am playing hoops, all of the stress and responsibility of my job here just melts away. It's gone. I'm in the zone. Who am I? Am I Michael Scott? I don't know. I might just be a basketball machine. Based on that clip, you might guess that Michael Scott is not so great at free throws. But how many free throws would you need to see him shoot before you would feel confident guessing his percentage? That's what we're going to investigate today. We have this applet that's going to um, animate some free throws for us. Now each time you use it, it's going to have a different actual percentage, so yours is probably going to behave differently than mine. Um, but I'm just going to show you what you're going to do. Um, up at the top, it's going to automatically start shooting 10 free throws in a row. Change it to just one to start with, and then just click shoot, and you'll either make or you'll miss. I've made two in a row so far, so you can see the line here, um, I'm two for two. So if I keep going, oh my goodness, this person's good. Holy cow. Okay, I've literally never seen it do that. We made the first five. So the proportion of makes is still one. Um, okay, so now we're going to change this to five and click shoot. Uh, there we go. Finally missed one. Okay, so after 10, the proportion of makes is 0.9. And then I'm going to do five and then another five. Once I get to 20, I'm going to start going by 10. So you can just adjust this so that you start doing 10 at a time. Um, follow these directions. It says when you think you know his true free throw percentage, stop recording the shots and then just write what your guess is down there. So you can go all the way up to 80. You could stop early. You could go even further if you're not confident. Pause the video now and do that. So yours is going to look different than mine, but after 80 free throws, I'm at 84%. So I'm going to guess that this person's around 82 because we seem to be hovering right around the low 80s. Um, once you've made your guess, you can click on Show True Probability and it'll tell you the actual free throw percentage of this person. Oh, that's lower than I thought. 75, it looks like. That's very interesting. See, I hadn't gone far enough to get down to the 75. In number three, we're just going to make a quick sketch. And it doesn't have to be perfect, but draw in the line. 60, 75, so about right here. The true proportion. And then don't spend hours recreating this, but just a quick sketch of what your um, graph looks like. Okay, it's not my best work. Now this next question um, plays right into what happened in my example. How could you make your guess more accurate? My guess wasn't terrible, but it wasn't very accurate. If I wanted it to be more accurate, I would need Michael to shoot more free throws. The more free throws he shoots, the closer he's gonna get to his actual percentage and the better I can be at guessing his actual percentage. Okay, so for me, once again, yours is a little bit different, but for me, Michael has a 75% probability of making a free throw. Interpret this probability. So here's how we interpret probabilities. If Michael were to shoot many, many free throws, he would make about 75% of them. I know it seems kind of silly to say many, many, but most textbooks do say many, many when they're talking about a long-term trend. So I'm just going to jot down a couple notes here. First of all, this is how we always interpret a probability. It's basically saying if we were to do this many, many times, we would see this particular outcome this percent of the time. And then number four is actually getting at something called the law of large numbers. In my scenario, Michael's free throw percentage was 75%, but I did not see that right away. In fact, in the first five shots, I saw 100%. That's in the short term. In the long term, we are going to see his 75% free throw percentage emerge. There's a little bit of room on the next page if you want to jot down these notes, but the law of large numbers says that the simulated probabilities tend to get closer to true probabilities as the number of trials increases. So basically, the more and more trials you do, the closer your simulated probability is going to get to the true probability. One of the key things we have to understand about probability is that it describes a long run relative frequency. Long run meaning over many, many trials, we see this trend. In the short term, probability is unpredictable. In the long term, it's very predictable. 
in a set of 10 free throws, I can't predict how Michael's going to do. He might get 60%, he might get 100%, he might get 80 Over the long term, say, thousands of free throws, I'm pretty sure he's going to make about 75% of them. This short-term thing is what really trips people up. Like imagine you're flipping a coin and you flip heads seven times in a row. Humans really want that eighth flip to be tails. Like we just, we can't handle seven heads in a row because we know that there's a 50% chance that it lands heads or tails. So we see the seven heads in a row and then we're like, the next one has to be tails. It just has to be. In the long term, 50% of the coin flips will be heads. In the short term, we don't know. You might get seven heads and one tail. We don't know. So there's a couple questions here under check your understanding that I'd like you to try on your own. You can pause the video and then we'll go over the answers together. This first one's just a really quick review of how to interpret. Notice the word interpret. You might want to get in the habit of circling that when you see it. If Pedro were to drive up to this light many, many times, it would turn red about 55% of the time. That's all you need for the interpretation. You do not have to reinvent the wheel. Just do that the same every time. Okay, for these probabilities, um, an outcome that's impossible is going to have a probability of zero, and an outcome that is certain or is guaranteed to happen will have a probability of one. You cannot have a probability smaller than zero or greater than one. An event being unlikely, um, occurring once in a while in a long sequence of trials, I would say that's 0 0.001. 0 0.3 is unlikely, but not that unlikely. Um, 30 percent, so out of 100 trials, we'd expect to see that outcome 30 times, as opposed to 0 0.001, which is 0.1 percent. So in 100 trials, we'd see it less than once, like that's pretty unlikely to happen. The outcome will occur more often than not. Technically, that could be 0.6 or 0.99, because both of those are greater than 50% or 0.5. Um, so I'm going to say 0.6 or 0.99. Okay, and then last but not least, we have the husband and wife deciding to have children until they have at least one boy and one girl. That's nice. They've had seven girls in a row. Doctor assures them they're more likely to have a boy next. Okay, that doctor is wrong. And this is like the coin flip example that I was um, explaining earlier. Probability is unpredictable when we look at the short run. So the probability that they have a boy on their next kid is 50%. It doesn't matter that they just had seven girls in a row. The next baby doesn't know about that. The next baby has a 50-50 chance of being boy or girl. According to the law of large numbers, if the couple were to have many, many babies, we would expect about half of them to be boys. And unfortunately, I don't think seven's going to count as many, many. So they got to have hundreds of kids. And after they've had hundreds of kids, I have lots of questions, but also after they've had hundreds of kids, about half of them will be boys. That's it for now. This is just kind of the basic idea of probability. We will get into all the rules that you may have learned in a previous math class, as well as like Venn diagrams and tree diagrams and all of that. For now, just the basic overview is all we need.